What's going on everybody? This is Patrick Minton Outdoors and we are on the road. This adventure is about to begin shortly so stick around. video don't forget i've got a leatherman giveaway going on at the end of the video there will be the little video that you can click on and go watch that and get entered but let's get on with this video So we've gotten off the interstate. We're actually on the road. We're looking for topping off the gas because I don't know how long it's going to be before I have gas again. Uh, got some food and stuff, drinks and stuff in the truck. Not a lot because it's not going to be out, but just part of the day. But uh, anyway, I haven't told you where I'm going yet, but uh, well, the exit sign said Big South Fork that way. Okay guys, so we are officially, officially in Big South Fork. Uh, right up the road there is the main entrance that came in. We're fixing to go back out and go up this road right here to the right. Yeah, to my right. Sorry. Um, that is West Bandy Creek Road. And there should be a campground up there we're going to go take a look at and see if it's something we would like to stay at. But we're finally in the park. Um, it's a heck of a drive up here. It's about a two hour drive to get to where I'm at right now. So anyway, I'm just out for the day. I'm killing time looking for the next places to camp. And this is one of the ways I do it. I know it probably seems like very um, not effective to some people, but to me it helps me plot and plan what I want to do. So uh, I'm going to turn this off you know at some point we'll be back and we'll take a look at the campgrounds um see what we got but this is the road we're fixing to turn on and like i said it's called west bandy creek road and as far as if you're a hiker there is trails all over the place uh if you're into equestrian there's trails all over the place for you too so we're going to go look at bandy creek campgrounds take a look at it looks like looks kind of like uh, there might be a little bit of roadage to look at too while we're there so let's go okay so I'm coming down to uh, check out this campground and I wandered upon this first off there's a cemetery right there that's called uh, Laura Levin's Cemetery and then this is right here Laura Blevins Farmstead circa 1920. So there's a cabin, there's an outbuilding here, and the old barn sitting right there. This is pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to pull them up in here and take a look at it. Um, there's a sign up there on the door. I may walk up there and take a look at that. But how cool is this? Um, now, uh oh, dog pecker nights again. Um, I will say that uh, the pre warning of wildlife is here again as far as um, bear, that kind of thing. We are in an area that known for bear. So, anyway, we're going to take a look at this real quick, maybe shoot some shots of it with the camera and get on down to the um, campground real quick so we can check it out. But this is really, really cool. Um, pretty neat. Uh, dog pecker nets. Gosh. Okay, since I got back to the truck, I actually uh, threw on a little bit of uh, redneck cologne, also known as, um, well, bug spray. Man, I was being attacked back there by everything flying. Uh, mosquitoes, dog pecker nets, you name it, they were flying around eat me up so anyway got some pretty cool uh pictures and stuff i'll throw in that's really neat that wasn't even on the 
map but I've marked it on Gaia and um, I will put I will put this um, this up on my uh, website at some point this trek so if you want to if you're in the area and want to check it out you can all right guys be back in a little bit Right, guys so i thought i would do a real quick look at the campgrounds here at bandy creek you got water you got electricity if you need it uh now the camp sites themselves are kind of weird uh you get a lantern post i think that's typical of all your national parks you got a fire ring you have picnic table um honestly this is probably one of the better sites of the bunch i've seen it and that one over there would work really good for me because i could put the tent in the back area so i'm probably gonna mark these two spots and um yeah i can move the picnic table over put my tent right there do all my cooking like normal from the truck but you have uh, food storage bins here too because there are black bear so you have to use your bins or lock it in your vehicles but and there's little pathways all over the place but typical food locker you know bear safe dang that's all the shut bear saver but uh yeah we could do this in the fall Got your lantern post. Do not hang trash from this pole. Makes sense. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna mark this this site and that site right over there on my Gaia as far as the number site numbers for future references. But like I said, you got electrical right there if you need it, water right there if you need it. Uh, every spot has water and electrical. Uh, I like how big this spot is, and I like how you get that open area back there um, for tent. If you're tent camping, like I would be, and then you move that picnic table wherever you needed to, and you got your fire pit there. But fire pits are no big deal to me anymore. We know why. Or... So, anyway, real pretty area. All right. We're going to get on. Like I said, I'll mark these two spots. Uh, this one and that one. On my Gaia that... Good to go. Alright, let's explore. Alright, so I pulled over here real quick. Um, I'm in the A section still at Bandy Campground. Here at Big South Fork. And something I just noticed about the A section. No electrical and no water hookups. So, if you're like me and can do off-grid, no problem. This is one of their pass-through sites, which I'm not a big fan of. You'll see over there is the back-end site with fire pit, but these are pass-through. So, you can pull in this one, and this will be your site and everything, but then your neighbor's site is right there. So they would have to either back in every time and you would have to back out, which it's whatever. But I'm going to tell you something. This place is desolate right now. I know it's summertime and everything. And actually, as cool as it is, I camp right now. Um, we got clouds overhead, as you can see. It's darkening up. We're going to have some rain here in a little bit. But if I was, I mean, I've, outside the humidity keeps popping in and out really bad. But... Anyway, I just want to show you this. The A section does not have electrical, but the other sections have electrical and water. Uh, a also doesn't have water at the sites. 
so you would have to go to the bathhouse there or there's a spigot right there you could get water for your campsite but like i've said in the past look at that sucker on my truck oh, it took off it'll try to bite me i'm sure um as i said in the past i always get away <laughs> let me get in the truck for a second horsefly follow me um as i said in the past i always bring my water from home um if it's just myself i'll bring the three gallons of water for myself in which is more than enough for a weekend or overnighter um and then i'll bring uh if it's me and chloe or me and somebody i'll bring the big blue jug full of water which is five gallons which is way more than you really need but anyway let's get on i've got another place to hit still uh, but I really like the Bandy Campground, so make notes of that. Uh, some of the campsites make note of, too, they're right beside the playground. So if you've got kids, that's cool. If you don't have kids, you know where I'm getting at. All right, guys. We'll be back. across this American Chestnut Field Laboratory Tennessee Department of Agriculture National Park Service University of Tennessee going down this little road here but anyway I'm gonna turn around because this road dead ends and it's not where I was wanting to go but I'm also noticing up there some dark clouds are forming, so that means we're going to have some weather later. But I knew that going into the day that we may have some storms, thunderstorms and stuff roll up, so we can deal with it. But uh, yeah, I'm going to turn around here. I'm going to go back, uh, back up to Pandy Campground. I don't think there's anything else down this road um, worth seeing. So I'm going to turn around. But I thought that was kind of cool that this just sitting here, you know, nowhere. Nowheresville. As of right now, no bear sightings. Okay, taking a quick break. Refueling break. Gotta get some water. Out of my cooler. It's thundering big time back over that way. You'll probably hear it in a minute. Um, But I brought all kinds of liquids with me for today. Um, we're actually, I'm trying to decide where I want to go from here. Um, there's two different ways I can go. There's one called Station Camp Campgrounds, which is right up. I'm going to go out of here and take a left. Or I can keep going to Leatherwood. So I may end up going to Leatherwood or Station Camp. Check it out real quick because it's on further up north. Um, I mean, it's a ways up there, but you know, what else have I got to do? It's uh, 12. I don't know if the time's right. It says it's 1251. But anyway, the way it's thundering and stuff, I'm going to be running through rain again. The drive between where I'm at right now, so this is 1251. I may have changed times. So I'm pretty sure my truck said it was earlier than that. But anyway, um, what was I saying? But I may go up here and we may ride up to the station camp, check it out, come back down and go to Leatherwood. What I was saying is the drive between Bandy Campgrounds area and Leatherwood is freaking awesome. It reminds me of the Smokies. Uh, real sharp turns and back and forth switchback stuff. It's real pretty. Um, so anyway, let's uh let's get on. Let's go north, I guess. Let's go up and check check out uh, the other campground, see what it looks like, and then uh, 
we're going down to Leatherwood and that may be it we'll see okay so I've made it up here to station camp it's about to come one heck of a thunderstorm um, I will say this station camp is a horse style camp uh, so if you've got horses and stuff bring them up here I may move pretty quick because there's a lot of trees around and wind starting to blow you ever get that eerie feeling that's exactly what I'm getting eating a lunchable I'm gonna roll the wind up <laughs> yeah I'm eating a lunchable Oh, that was bright. Yeah, I'm going to move. I don't like this. This is not good. Not safe. Not safe at all. All right. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, hey, guys. So I'm moving up here a little bit where there's a lot less trees in front of me and beside me and around me. This wind's getting up pretty bad. There's actually somebody camping back there. But they were sitting in their vehicle. I think they were, the storm was um, kind of spooking them a little bit. I'm going to pull up here um, just in the middle of the road a little bit. There's nobody coming. Um, but what we may do is try to go over here to the pump, the river access to see how close we can get. See what it looks like. But right now I'm going to finish eating a little bite of lunch. Uh, before I do anything else but uh, I will mark on Gaia that this is a horse camp don't camp here um, it's pretty neat if you have horses it's a pretty cool place to come but I don't have horses and I'm not staying in a horse camp because I know what happens there's deer fly or horse flies and stuff that hang out here because they know next meal is coming I can't get service right now. Look at the radar. But I know there's some pretty good storms out there. I can hear it. So anyway, I'm going to eat this little bit of lunch. We'll proceed on. Go back down. We'll end up going back down to Leatherwood and checking that out. I'm really close to Oneida. Or Obed. Um... Now, I thought about going over there, but with the weather starting to act up, and I was correct about changing time, uh, must be close enough to the time zone change to do it. But my watch says 120, and my truck says 1220. So I got to keep that in mind now. All right, um, we eat lunch, and we'll proceed on here in a little bit. the river this is river access it's actually called station camp crossing um, let's walk over here for a second there's nobody down here with storms and stuff that's going on uh, we go back up you got station camp horse camp where we just left you got the big island crossing you got uh, 
station camp and you got east trailhead but trying to look and see it says leatherwood road eight miles but that's hiking that's not driving and bandy creek campground 6.4 miles going that way um that's all hiking this none of that is uh driving whatsoever because the road ends down there there's some picnic tables and stuff i hope this is oh it's fogged up sorry about that anyway so that's where that is uh i came across that very sign right there it says no vehicles beyond this point as i was coming down that hill and i said uh-oh but it didn't mean me, man. Don't go down there with a vehicle. But um, I think you can camp down there. It's real primitive camping. But you would have to usher all your stuff down. Let's see if we can get up here where the... There's the river. It's moving a little bit. Of course, it's had, we've had a little bit of rain the last couple of days. You can see it. So get the camera to focus on the water. It's pretty muddy right now it's real muddy you can tell there there's a lot of runoff but so we made it to this point we're we're back in big south fork national forest um but yeah i was looking at those signs and they were very very uh throw uh, throw you off because you can't get to none of those places unless you're backpacking or hiking but anyway i hear more thunder um, I just sat there and ate lunch up here at the horse camp uh, in my truck while it was pouring rain and wind and everything else. Um, so we are going to go back up this, which will be fun. I did see an offshoot road, but I'm not sure where it went, so I'll look at Gaia real quick. I parked right underneath a dead tree. Didn't I? Look at that. A dead. And I parked right under it. But anyways, let's get back up this as carefully as possible. I passed it. We passed the vehicle. There was a car behind me. Um, he turned around and went back up too. Didn't see anything that was interesting to him. But Oh, and I have somewhere where I'll stop on the way back up. I'll show you that shortly. Okay, so I was coming up. I was going down to the um, river access. And I passed this. I said, oh, i got to stop on the way back. But I see this sign right here. This says Chimney Rocks. And I was like, what? Chimney Rocks? Then I look. Oh, cool. There's another one back over here. You see it right to there. That's pretty neat. Look at the holes through that. So you kind of wonder, I mean, it looks like where it's been eroded over the years. So it probably had uh, water run through here at one time. There's a see that road down there right there finger right through there that goes up to a cemetery I didn't go up there yeah, I could I like cemeteries but I'm by myself so if something happened I'm by myself but anyway let's check that out chimney rocks pretty cool we'll snap some photos of it we'll get on Okay, so I was going down to the other campgrounds, got down there, and they've got it blocked off right now. Uh, Continue on route. I will. So, um, there was somebody singing there, and they said they had to close the, the campgrounds. It got looks like it got pretty windy on this end of the storm, so there may be in some trees fall or something, and they had to close the campground down. I don't know. But there was a park official sitting there and said, no, no, no. So I said, okay, I won't. So anyway, we're working our way towards interstate. Man, that's that's gorgeous right there. Look at that. But you can see how it looks. I'll turn the camera around. How it looks around me up here. Moon cow. Moon cow. Anyway, um, so I'm probably going to call it at this point because it's, come on, here, I'm over here. So I'm probably going to call it at this point. It's um, 2.30, well, it's 1.39 at home. Uh, Taking about two and a half hours or so to get back home, so that's about right. Um, but I 
found a place to camp. I'm going to be going back. We will be camping at that uh, first one we went to. Uh, the river access and everything, that was really cool. There is a road that I almost went down, but I don't know how far I could have gone. And I'm by myself. But it looked real tantalizing, shall we say. Um, I'm not far from Oneida, Tennessee. Which, if I'm not mistaken, what this is going to do is put me out at Harriman. So that's a good two and a half... Yeah, it's almost a good two and a half hour drive to my house from there. So, and I got weather to drive through on the way back. It is what it is. Big South Fork cabins for rent. Pretty area. It's weird how it's laid out, though. You'll be driving through the park, and all of a sudden you're out of the park. And then you're back in the park. Weird. And I, I would like to say... If it was a gravel road and you throw that asphalt stuff on it 30 years ago, you should have just left it gravel because they're so bad now, they're just bad. But anyways, um, really, really cool place. Um, if I come across anything else, then I may come back. So for right now, we're just going to drive and head towards the house and who knows, may run into something. Well, let's go on everybody. Hope you appreciate the video, um, as you can hear. I'm at home, it's Sunday morning, or Sunday afternoon. It's raining again, <laughs> another thunderstorm. So anyway, hope you appreciate the video. We will be going back to um, Big South Fork and camping at some point, um, pretty soon this fall. And uh, headed up to Daniel Boone itself. So stay tuned for all that. I've got uh, something in mind for in a couple weeks, so we'll see you pretty soon. We've got some more outings to do for sure. Rain. This is the weirdest August I've ever seen. Never seen it rain like this so much in August. It usually dries the bone. All right, guys. See you in the next one. Be prepared.